feel playing that match? Yeah, I, f uh, I feel obviously uh, all sorts of good. Um, obviously, there was a, a lot of up and down through that match, and uh, all I could ask of myself was just to keep competing and sort of hope to find a way. And I got fortunate a few times, and it worked out. Uh, Milos, what do you think it's been in your game in the last year that's allowed you to play a match this well today? I think it's just constant improvement. Uh, I think I have a better understanding dealing with experiences of playing Roger, Rafa, and Novak many times over the last uh, 12 months specifically because I've been always sort of pushing to later stages of, of the bigger tournaments and normally it's them that I'm playing at those moments. So just give me a sense of, okay, what do I want to do different this time than the last few times and it's, it worked out today. Well, I think when you have knowledge, when you have an understanding, it gives you some kind of peace. It gives you some kind of calm during a match that you can really um, believe and understand what you need to do to find the solutions. Well, I think it's having a better say match judgment of when to sort of try to step up, when you can sort of hold back, which moments is it's good enough just to sort of play it through, not get too caught up in the person you're playing and um, respect them but not give them too much overwhelming respect where it affects your tennis. Right. Milos, three match points. Um, what, what, was, what was your feeling the, on those occasions, the mental approach to each of those? Because you remained pretty calm, well, it looked like you remained pretty calm. To be honest with you, at the moments when I was playing those match points, it didn't really feel like match points. It was just like another point that I was trying to get through. Um, I can only remember one that he he sort of gifted me a second serve return uh, with his forehand, but I don't even remember the last two. It just sort of going through the paces at that moment of what do I need to do now, not really signifying it as a match point. A sort of lighter note, it's about to be your one year anniversary with the sleeve. I'm just wondering if you could reflect on the time you two have spent together and what has brought your game. The sleeve's been loyal. <laughs> it's uh, all you can ask from, from a significant other, and it makes me feel good. Yes, to remain calm and not go over the top happy after this kind of win because it seems you always pretty bottling, you know, you're not going fist pumping or anything. Is it just you or do you make this effort not to get away? No, it's just the way I am. It's it's really great what I was able to do today and I'm very happy with it, but it's I, I don't let myself get caught up because um, this isn't where it ends, you know, it's uh, there's a lot more that I want to achieve this week, so it's always about what do I need to do next to get better, and it's always been like that, not just throughout tournaments, but throughout when I've done well and I've gotten my ranking up and had new milestones there. It's always, okay, what's next? And it just uh, just the way I think. Yeah, it's, uh, I think I have a good understanding of what I need to do against Roger. Obviously, that's the easiest part, understanding it rather than doing it. But um, I think the last three times we've played, um, I've sort of been able to change fortunes a little bit, uh, especially one that was important to me in Paris. Uh, even the other two, I didn't play well at the start of the matches in London and in Brisbane, but I was able to find a way to fight myself back into those matches and give myself some opportunities. So I just got to keep, uh, keep calm, keep collected, and just try to figure out solutions and adjustments as they come. What do you think it would say for you and your partners if you get back-to-back -back wins against players like Roger Rafa? Obviously, it would be gr a great thing, but that's just a side note. It's, it doesn't matter what it means. It's just about winning tomorrow and trying to find a way to win. Brisbane match. What, what were your big takeaways? Because it was a great match. 
well competed, you were hitting the ball massively, but just came up a little bit short. What was the, the takeaway from that? Yeah, I, I especially I get playing um, one of the top guys. It was the first time I really, being a set and a breakdown, gave myself uh, sort of a second breath of ch chance in, in a match. So that that was a big thing to take away from it. It was also important in the sense that for most of the part, it was it was my mobility, my movement, and my ground stroking that kept me alive in that match and gave me opportunities. At the beginning of the third set, I, I don't think I served that great that match, so I think it gives me something that I'd want to do differently this time around. Um, I guess because you just want to prove people wrong in that sense. It has some some good feel to that, but I can't control <laughs> what people say. I just try to sort of get in my own in my own system, in my own bubble, and focus on the things that I do have control over. So my question was going to be sort of similar to that. Do you, I mean, these four guys have been sort of represented as being really firm at the top, and do you see them as a group still as sort of a ceiling you have to, to break through in order to make that next step, or is it all just every man for himself? I think is it's every man for every himself. Day? I think you've had... Uh, probably the last 18 months, different storylines for, for all four guys. I don't think it's uh, been a, the same storyline like it was for many years before. So it's, it's, every, it's an individual sport. I don't think those guys are like, hey, guys, let's make semifinals, all four of us this week, you know. Um, but it's going out there one at a time. You don't have to be the best player in the tournament every day. You just got to be better than the player on the other side of the net. For a while, Rafa was the top player that you like the least playing. What What do you feel today? Is there one player that you like less to play than others, or what that you feel more or less comfortable with? No, I don't think it's a comfort. I think just Rafa's a player, just because he's so different from everybody else, that demands probably the biggest biggest adjustment to. He's out of those uh, big four or three, you know, he's the left-handed player. He's the guy that's going to try to get the ball up on you. He's the one that will actually stand really far back on important moments as well. You know, he'll do all those things. Uh, so I think he is the most uncomfortable because he is the most different out of the pack. But uh, obviously all, all three, four guys just make life difficult for everybody just in their own way. Just wondering when he's standing like pretty much behind the line judges to return your serve. Do you ever think of going underhand? <laughs> no. Um, I, th I I think I respect my serve enough that I uh, overhand is the way I should go. It would probably work though. <laughs> Maybe it would, but um, it would be pretty ugly if it didn't. <laughs> uh, two things. One thing was with the return of serve. Uh, sometimes he stood way back behind Indian Wells, and other times he also moved right up on the baseline. Did you, were you aware that he was changing it up on the uh, on the return position on your serve? Yeah, you could tell, uh, especially, I don't know if it was uh, just because the shadow came over the court, the ball starts bouncing less. Uh, at that point, the temperature dropped. That's when he was standing closer in. Um, second set, most of it, he was standing pretty far back. But he was changing it all the time. I think it's the right thing to do against, uh, let's say, a big server. You, you have to, especially if they get in a rhythm, to make them think. Even if it's not a big server, you do it pretty much against anybody. There was a few uh, second server turns that I would go back on. There was some I tried to stay in on. You know, you, you try to give yourself a chance and put yourself in the best position to win. And the other thing is, 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 is Nadal the toughest <coughs> player to play to face physically? I mean, that was a long match on a hot day. Would, would he be the, the guy that you would not pick, let's say, out of the top? the top guys who were ahead of you to, to face uh, with length of match and, and, and as hot as it was? No, it, I think uh, I think Novak can just run you just as much. Uh, Roger can get pretty exhausting because he plays quick in between points, so you never really get a gasp. I think they all have their ways, but they, they all know how to tire a person out or how to make life difficult. They just go about it in different ways. I think Rafa just really puts out physically and emotionally more expresses 
to everybody the the effort than other guys, but I think they all just work just as hard and try to just as hard in matches. No, I mean the effect on you. Yeah, no, but I think it's the same. Yeah. I think it's I think it just it can seem that way because of the way he expresses himself. My last question. When when you see players standing that far back against your serve, does it kind of give you confidence that they have to do that? They have to stand behind and they have to, you know, wait and try and get your serve back? Yeah, it does. It gives you it gives you a sort of a comfort knowing that you're disturbing their rhythm. Uh, but at the same time, uh, it makes you just a little bit more conscious on what you need to do. Obviously, you approach those moments a little bit differently than you approach if somebody's standing in all the time. So you, you just try to sort of, I guess, as much as you can in sport, calculate what you need to do. Thank you.